All right, so I am here with Winston Brown of Lean on D, uh, Senior Care Advocates. Yes. Okay, I got the full, got the full <laughs> name right. Okay, so she is the co-owner. So Winston, thank you so much for joining me for this video. Um, you know, we do a lot of provider interviews and a lot mm -hmm. of them focus on um, counseling and different mental health uh, areas. But one of the populations that I know you're passionate about, obviously, uh, but that I'm passionate about as well and really want to make sure we focus on is our elder population. Mm -hmm. um, so go ahead and tell me just a little bit about Lean on D and the services that you and your sister offer. So the goal of Lean on D is really to pr provide a peace of mind to our seniors and their families. So the services that we provide are senior check-ins, our um, home placements, we do um, doctor's visits, we also do a home safety assessment and we have a new, uh, new service that we are launching or will launch when everything is fully um, reopened is our Dementia Live service. So with our um, check-in service, what we like to say is we provide resource education and of course um, companionship to our clients. So we're not a home health care company. Um, okay. We get that a lot, but we're not. <laughs> Unfortunately, Facebook and Google, there's no other option but to, to, to check um, home health care, but we are a okay. senior service business. So with regards to resources, for instance, it's we do the most obscure things. So for instance, say mom needs help making a doctor's appointment. So we'll do so with our check-in service, we go in, we're checking out, checking in on her. We're saying, for example, uh, Miss Jessica, you know, had, you know, how are you doing today? Do you need any help? Oh, I was trying to make this doctor's appointment. I can't seem to get it to work. I don't understand. So we would sit, we would make the doctor's appointments for her. Or for instance, she says, okay, man, I was thinking about getting a puppy. Do you know any way, anybody or something like that? And then we would do some research for her, make sure that she, you know, she can find, get us a puppy that's actually, you know, not sick, things like that. Because we have um, specific pro providers that we work in. So we like to say we're like the children that are in town. So we do all these miscellaneous things for yeah. mom. So for instance, exactly. even yeah. if they... I'm sorry, go ahead. No, it sounds like you're really an extension of family. Exactly, exactly. So it's it's funny. Um, we have one of our clients. I went there yesterday and she was like, the cable doesn't work. But she has um, some cognitive impairments. So, of course, she doesn't remember how to turn the TV on. So then, you know, I just put the sticker up, you know, how to actually turn the TV on, find the remote, put them in a specific spot close to the television. And, you know, we had a little, we got a little box, put them in there to say, okay, this is where this is, this is how you're supposed to do it. So things like that. I mean, people don't realize how that will affect somebody's quality of life. You want to watch TV, you know you want to watch TV, you don't remember how to get the TV on. Simple, simple things that nobody ever thinks about. It's, you know, that's what we are there for. You know, with our doctor's visits, we've been, it's been really busy with doctor's visits for us lately. And um, one of the things we find with COVID going on, um, taking our seniors to the doctor is the wait time is just so much longer than what we normally, you know, normally you go there, you have like a 10, 15 minute wait time. With COVID now, we're doing this waiting in the car. The car is the new um, waiting room. So, you know, we make sure we have the specific music. So for instance, one of our clients is German and she has specific oh. music that she likes. So we'll be playing her music or even we're playing tic-tac-toe. We're doing things with them to pass the time. We're not just, our service is like, we're not just taking you to the doctor and we sit in silence and no, we're having um, conversations, right? So once with our doctor service, we go in with the client, obviously they have to fill out the um, paperwork to give us the okay. We go in with the client because a lot of times what we find is, and I find that with my mother-in-law, she would go to the doctor, you say, hey, what happened at the doctor? She says, Oh, I don't know. I didn't, or she said, I didn't understand what he said. 
So to alleviate that, we're in there with our clients. We provide them and their and their families with a, a with a with a document. This is what the doctor talked about. This is what happens. This is how mom needs to follow up. If they need medication to be picked up, we go ahead. We pick up the medication and things like that. So we do again. The, we are the kids that are in town. We do all those miscellaneous things that you know the home health care companies are not are not going to be doing um, with our home safety assessment and this one is this service is such a valuable service because as we age and you know we bought say you bought you bought your house in like 1975 and you're young and you can run up and down the stairs and you can reach the top shelf and you can do all these things but now you're 85 years old 86 years old you're living in this house and this house is not designed for somebody that is an 85 year old person because of the way the house is set up. Or even when you're living in the house, you don't see obstacles. And unfortunately, if some, you know, somebody has a fall at 85, it is detrimental to their health. So with our home safety assessment, the goal of that is to really reshape the way our clients are living in the house and, and you know I have this little catchphrase I believe like the handrail is the new seat belt because if, mama, if there's the handrail in the bathroom where mom is going to the bathroom she can push herself up off the toilet to help get up off the toilet not using a face basin I had one of my clients using the face basin to help leverage herself to get up off the toilet these are simple fixes that we can do in the home to reduce mom falling and hitting her head because that's what happened she fell in her head on the face basin in the bathroom so you know these are things that you know we come in we're certified um home safety um home um home, home safety assessment people we come in we go through and we just take a fresh look at how um your parents are using the home so that's um so that's our home safety assessment and you know we have um uh, contractors that we we partner with that can go in and do the fixes. And a lot of times, again, it's a matter of just putting up the handrails, fixing broken stairs, things like that, that can make a huge, huge difference in the way mom or dad is using the home. Then we have the, um, the placements and the placements, unfortunately, right now are not, you know, you know, as everything is going on with COVID, it's, it's not the most ideal situation to place um, a loved one in an assistant living um, facility, but they are very good assistant living facilities out there, especially in the Annapolis area that are on top of this COVID situation. We have, you know, the partners that we work with have had no no um, um, co um, COVID outbreaks in their facilities. And we've worked with them, we've placed um, clients there and we've had great results. So, you know, yes, we know it's the fear of what is going on right now, but it's important to do everything with um, your educated consumer. So that's really, really important for us with our placements that we're doing. And again, they, that has slowed down for right now, but we've been doing a lot of home safety assessments yeah. and a lot of doctor's visits. That's like the, <laughs> the most popular service to date right now. And of course, again, we do have the, yeah, we, I, know, I feel like I'm just talking and talking, I'm sorry. <laughs> and the last service that we just, um, we just, uh, we, we, you know, we took some, because we had some downtime from March to April, and I wanted to do a dementia service. My, both my mother and grandfather had um, dementia. They both actually had Alzheimer's disease. And, you know, when my mom and dad, when, grand, when my mom actually, I'll talk, you know, more about my mom. So when my mom was diagnosed, we had no idea what was going on with her. So we were like, Oh, she keeps on forgetting everything. We don't know what's going on. We don't know what's going on. And, you know, it's not until she was really in us uh, in stage four that we actually got her diagnosed. And a lot of the things we could have prevented earlier, along, um, earlier, you know, we didn't. And, you know, we, we didn't get a chance to really ask her what it is that she wanted. And if we knew what the signs were for dementia, we could have prevented, you know, 
basically I felt like me and my sister were guessing at everything once we got to the later parts of, um, of the disease. Because when someone has dementia, you know, it's a terminal illness and it's important for families to understand that. And those are some of the things too, even, you know, in the check-in service, we talk to our clients about it. It's not a it's not a beautiful subject. It's not a subject that anybody wants to talk about. Dementia, everybody's afraid of it, but it's important that we educate ourselves on it. It's, you know, education is the key to planning and it makes right. us, it makes our life so much better. So the, that service to Dementia Life, actually, it's, 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 it should be done in, with, um, with an audience because you know we go we explain what dementia is you know the different types of dementia then we also do um actually a live experience so for instance we have the um we have the audience participate so we we impair their senses and then we have them do tasks and so they kind of really have an understanding that dementia is not just memory loss because a lot of times that's what people think oh no they have dementia it's just memory loss it's just so much more to it than that because your judgment is impaired your you know your 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 sense your your senses so feeling so feeling sight and tactile processing is also impaired with dementia and it makes it makes it difficult for you to have um to live your daily life so it's so you know with the dementia live i cannot wait to actually be able to do that in person so people actually have a much better understanding of what dementia is so those are our services. <laughs> I, love, no, I love the in-depth answers. Um, I mean, le- like you said earlier, it really does sound like you offer an extension of family. Um, mm-hmm. so you get that really personalized connection. And I think it's important um, that what you're doing really takes the fear away. Yes. Uh, I know you and I had talked briefly and, and my grandmother, she, she's 92. Um, but she had spent uh, a brief amount of time in a, a senior living facility after a stroke. And mm-hmm. uh, we didn't have someone advocating for us. And as her family, of course, nothing's good enough. Mm-hmm. Um, and we didn't know the questions to ask and we didn't know what to look for. And it was a scary process for all of us. And if we had had someone who really understood the ins and outs of the industry, it would have been um, I think much easier for the family, but also much easier to have someone to say, you know, to my grandmother, we, we've been here, we know what this looks like, we know what to look for. Exactly. And even, you know, like, you know, for instance, one of my clients right now, she has, you know, you know, she's in stage two, you know, the early stages. And it's for us to, you know, we actually facilitated a conversation with her and her son because it's a tough conversation to have, you know what I mean? It really is where you're gonna, you know, you're saying, to, you're saying to your children, listen, at some point, I am not gonna be able to make these decisions. This is what I want. This is where I wanna be buried, things like that. Those are the hardest conversations to have. And, you know, I wish that, you know, we were able to have those conversations with my mom, but it was just so overwhelming. Right, right. Thank you so much for offering all of that information on your services. Um, oh, and I, I think it's great when you said you go into the homes with fresh eyes. Um, yes. <laughs> my grandmother's been in her house for, I mean, just decades. And um, she's, she's always been a very simple woman. She doesn't need a lot and she's not going to spend extra money. And growing up, I remember there was always just like a, a dish towel on the floor in the kitchen, mm-hmm. if, you know, by the sink. And then one day I walked in and I slipped on it and I was like, oh, I mm-hmm. didn't think about this. But if she comes to do the dishes in her walker and she slips on this dish towel, that's, that's not going to be a good thing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, sometimes it's just the little things you don't even think about. So exactly. it's great that you guys go in and catch that. Um, so we, you talked a little bit about your, your mom. Um, is this how you really got involved in this field of elder care? Yes. Yeah, so my, you know, my mom had, um, so let's, let's, let's back up. So <laughs> when I, I got married, we moved to New York and um, my mom was here and she was taking care of my grandfather. And so, you know, we thought everything was okay. And then we came back for Christmas and the house was a disaster. My mom is normally like a clean freak, neat freak person. And, you know, we just couldn't like, you know, we couldn't figure out like what was going on with her and things like that. And, you know, we were up in New York. We're like, oh, 
know, sure, she's okay. Maybe it's just, you know, one of these things, one of these things, one of these things. And then eventually, um, you know, things, everything just kind of spiraled out of control. And so, yes, that's why we actually started the business because, you know, my sister and I, we had absolutely positively no clue what we needed to do. And, you know, by going through all of the problems that we had, taking care of my mom remotely, which was really, really difficult, we decided that, hey, you know, this would be, you know, this would be a great business to help families who are remote or even families that are busy to just do things and just check in on their parents to see really what is going on because a lot of times I you know I find that we would rely on neighbors to find out neighbors they have their own lives it's not their responsibility to say oh my god you know I went to your mom's house and it was a disaster or that hey I you know she didn't make any do these doctor's appointments and things like that that's you know it's nice if a neighbor can do that but that's really not their responsibility. And so, you know, that was, you know, these are the things that, you know, those are some of the hurdles that we had. So, you know, we decided, you know, let's start this business. And my sister actually, she's um, a hospice nurse. Now she's actually, um, you know, with COVID and everything, she's not doing hospice anymore. She's doing just, you know, regular nursing intake patients and, and stuff like that. But you know, she, for years and years after my mom passed, was like, we should really do something with this business. We should do something. We should do something. And, you know, um, you know, situations changed. I'm an accountant by trade. Mm -hmm. My um, company got sold. And then I decided, well, as opposed to going to another company, let me actually do something that I actually love. And, you know, with my church, we've been involved with helping our seniors and things like that for many, many years. And it has brought me such joy that I'm like, I want to actually make a difference. I think in life, sometimes we do things for the money and we don't realize that we can get so, we can be so fulfilled by doing something for doing things for other people. And that, you know, that to me makes a difference to me. It's important to, to give back. My mom has always taught me that. And if you're in a situation to help people, you should. Beautiful. So this is in a way her legacy too. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. When I do the dementia live, it's um, you know, it's um her picture and my grandfather's picture, and I say it's you know we wanted to have a service that would honor both their memories. That's so beautiful. So branching off of that, what um what would you say is the most rewarding thing about working with seniors? Oh my gosh, the <laughs> most rewarding thing. So I'll, 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 tell, I'll tell you how they normally say to me, I don't understand why my kids waste this money. <laughs> and then, at the, so this will be like day one. And by, by so, so we, because we go every week. So by week two, they're like, oh my God, I am so happy you guys are here. <laughs> so, you know, hearing that they appreciate us and just even, um, you know, getting the TV fixed the other day or showing my client how to fix the TV the other day, she was just so happy and it, it just seeing, just doing these things for them so that they, they hold on to their independence. It makes me so happy, honestly. I, it, it, it fills me with joy because I can't just imagine at, you know, 92, you know, wanting to t watch the TV and don't, and you just don't know how to do it. Yeah. And you're embarrassed to go and ask, you know, like a child or mm -hmm. somebody or a neighbor, you know, you're, cause you're embarrassed. You, you don't want right, hey, to say, Hey, yeah. exactly. Exactly. So, you know, they, you know, so, and, you know, and I tell my clients, I'm like, there's nothing you guys can do to, there's no question that is silly. There's nothing. If you have a question about your smartphone, we're doing a tutorial on the smartphone, <laughs> smartphone. Cause little, and that's, some, you know, those are the things that we're doing. We're like, okay, we're like, what are we talking about today? We go in, we have, cause we have a curriculum that we actually designed a curriculum and sometimes we, st we try to stick to it. But if things come up in life, we, we veer from that. So we'll have a technology, um, you know, a, a, you know, a, a, you know, one visit we're talking about technology and how mm -hmm. to, to use your smartphone and how to use Zoom and how to, you know, so that they can interact and they don't feel mm -hmm. so isolated. So right. but those are the things that I like. And also one other thing that I like too is um, just finding resources and um, resources that can help the family. So for instance, if somebody, is a veteran and you know 
you know, I had um, this one client, he was, um, he was a veteran, he wanted to go into assistant living. And, you know, there was, you know, you know, costs, you know, assistant livings are incredibly expensive. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you're a veteran, you have the um, aid and attendance benefits. So that can help you with some of the costs for some of the things for the assistant living and also even for home health care services. So when you find things that can help your clients and their families, even to save money, or even just, just simple things like that, just being able to provide education and just being able to help them in their everyday lives. It, 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 makes, it really makes us feel good. Yeah, and take some of that burden away. Yeah, um, definitely. So we, we talked a little bit about um, you know, the aspect of, of seniors being lonely or just realizing they, they don't know how to work some of the technology. Um, are those some of like the most common issues or common problems that our seniors seem to face? Yeah, definitely. That's what, um, those are the common things. And also just um, nutrition and wow. helping them, you know, figure out what to eat and when to eat and things like that. Especially right now with COVID, a lot of the seniors are fearful of going to the grocery store. And again, kids that are in town, okay, we are, you know, we'll call up our client. Okay, we're coming today. Do you need us to pick you up some stuff from the grocery store? Right. These are some of the things because they're watching the news and they're hearing that, you know, 3 million people in the U.S. have COVID. And, you know, when this thing started, it was everything that, oh, seniors be aware, seniors be aware, seniors be aware. And, you know, we want them to feel like, okay, if you're not comfortable with going outside, we can bring the things for you. And, you know, and just to step back, when we are going into the homes, we have the face shield, the mask, and the gloves. And so we are going in, and I have one of my clients, she's like, okay, here comes the Martian, <laughs> because we're fully covered. <laughs> but again, they understand that that is for their safety. And again, we want them to feel safe as we enter the home. So, mm -hmm. and we also, we, you know, now that the tests, the tests are readily available, we are getting tested once a month. The, the, our mm -hmm. staff, the, if the staff is going into the home, they have to get tested because we want to make sure not only with doing the face shields and the mask and the gloves, that we are not bringing anything in the homes. So. Right, exactly. Um, so talking about um in terms of, of community being supportive of our elderly um obviously i guess you know one of the best ways is to make sure that we're practicing great hygiene and washing hands and things exactly. like that um but what are some things as a community that we can all do to support our elderly population i think one of the most important things we can do is really listen to them mm -hmm. a lot of the times you know they feel isolated because people are not spending the time to listen to them. And that is the most important thing. Even if grandma is telling you the story 10 times about how she met grandpa, let her tell her story. Her, you know, she, you know, she wants to impart that on you. It's important that we spend time and listen and listen without having our smartphones in our hands. Oh, yeah. Because that is, it is the most upsetting thing. And, you know, my clients tell me all the time, that they hate, you know, their, their kids or anybody, they're trying to have a conversation with them. And it's like, of course, the, the you know, the phone ha is getting much more of the attention than they are. So it's just important that we, we spend time with them and we listen to them and we acknowledge them because we are all, you know, hopefully we are all going to get old. So we need right. to respect them. Okay. Wonderful. I, I like what you said about hopefully we were all going to get old because I think sometimes there is this negative stigma about age and, and yes. getting older, but, but you're right. It is a privilege to grow old um, and it is a privilege to be able to have the elderly in our life. So I, mm -hmm. I like that perspective of, of thinking of, of aging as a positive thing. Exactly. We need to change society's mindset on what it's, what it is, you know, we have this negative connotation about aging and aging is, it's, it's not a negative thing. When you age, you bring, you, you have so much knowledge to impart. You may not know how to work a smartphone, but you know how to read people. You, you know what I mean? You have so, you, if they have not done what they did, we would not be here. Right. And that is the, that is what we need to realize. If they didn't, know. <laughs> no, but it's true. Yeah. If they didn't, yeah, if they didn't do what they did, we wouldn't be here. We, you know, and we tend to forget that. Right. That's beautiful. 
Thank you so much. Um, You're what's welcome. the best way for people to contact you? Is it, uh, is it your website or? So our website, um, my email address is wbrown at leanond.com. My phone number is um, 410-449-4538. And so, we, and it's so funny, it's, we just started running these Facebook leads uh -huh. and those silly things weren't sending me, sending us, I, my, my, um, my partner, my sister actually last night, she said, oh my God, did you see all these thing leads on Facebook? We have you, did you get them? I said, no. So I had to call the company today. It was like 10 people. I'm just like, yeah. oh. Oh my gosh. Well, I'll make sure we link to everything, your Facebook, your website, and your phone number um, in the description of this video and also on a slide at the end of the video. So before we go, is there anything else you'd like to say? Um, just thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate the opportunity to give us, um, you know, to give us the platform. We, uh, you know, we are here to um, help our seniors and just to make life easier for them and the caregivers. Anything we can do, we are here to help. Of course. Thank you so much for serving our elderly population. You're welcome.